Good morning, dear colleagues. We will start our session today with a very, very important debate, timely debate, and relevant debate. We are we're going to talk about the European Year of Skills, um, and we have some uh, guest speakers, important guest speakers, um, like Commissioner for Jobs and Social Rights, Nicholas Schmidt, uh, Dragos Pislaru, Chair of the Committee on Employment and Social Affairs of the European Parliament, Jürgen Siebel, the Executive Director of the European Centre for the Development of Vocational Training, Noelia Cantero, uh, Director of the European Association of Regional and Local Authorities for Lifelong Learning, and our dear colleague Tania Ristova, Chair of the SEDEC Commission at the COR. Um, last October and following the uh, President of the European Commission State of the Union Address, the European Commission presented its proposal to make 2023 the European Year of Skills. So the diagnosis in that communication is one that we at local and regional level are very aware of and that has to do with, for example, the mismatch in some labor sectors between needs and availability of workers, the need to provide adequate training and skills development to achieve the twin transitions, the absolute necessity to continuously provide lifelong training to keep a motivated, up-to-date and dynamic workforce, or how to better equip the young, captivate talent, integrate the migrants, and prevent a decline in the competitiveness of our economic and productive tissue. Local and regional authorities have a key responsibility in tackling all these challenges. To debate on how we can do that. I will now give the floor, I think first we have a video. We don't have a video? Do we have a video? <laughs> We're having a video. Europe is facing many challenges. The climate crisis and the green transition, demographic change and digitalization, the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and the war against Ukraine. All this impacts the labor market. Too many Europeans struggle to find a decent job and the demands are ever-changing. Europe must build the future now. Regions and cities are on the front line to achieve that, promoting skills development, training and lifelong learning all over Europe.
Now, dear colleagues, it's my great pleasure and honor to give the floor to Commissioner Schmidt. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us and to share with us your thoughts, your views about such an important landmark as the European Years of Skills. Commissioner, you have the floor for 10 minutes. Thank you very much, uh, President. And dear members uh, of the committee, uh, so first I, I would uh, express uh, my uh, great appreciation for the work you're doing. Uh, we had a very important and interesting uh, discussion on the European Year of Youth and the necessity to have a very active youth policy. And uh, now uh, I must say the com committee is leading in uh, in the preparation of the year of uh, skills. And there is obviously a continuity between uh, the year of youth and the year of skills. We um, know all that uh, we are in a extremely rapid uh, period of changes, uh, of transformations. And this commission has started with uh, very, very ambitious uh, programs. On one hand, uh, make U Europe climate ne neutral, which is a, a huge, huge enterprise, a huge uh, project uh, by 2050, but uh, minus 55% by 2035, which means tomorrow. And uh, also um, close the gaps between Europe and other important economies in the world in the development of digital technologies. And all this uh, is about uh, Europe's position in the world. It's about uh, our competitiveness, but it's also about our economic and social model. And uh, that's why, at the end, it's uh, an issue which every citizen is concerned by. It's an issue of uh, how can we take along everybody. And this is the issue of the year of skills. Because now we uh, notice that a majority of companies, a majority of companies complain and sometimes cannot invest because they have difficulties uh, at the level of hiring uh, the skilled people they need. This is reducing our growth potential. This is uh, reducing our competitiveness uh, for the future. And therefore, uh, the year of skills is a message, but it is also an invitation for very concrete actions. And um, therefore, I, I'm very happy that the Committee of Regions has now put this on your agenda, but also with a very, very concrete uh, ideas and proposals. And why is it so important for regions and local authorities to invest in people, to invest in skills? Well, our ecosystems, our industrial ecosystems, they are very much linked to regions. They are very much linked to local, uh, to local uh, uh, environments. And uh, if we want these ecosystems to thrive, if we want to help these ecosystems to change and to transform, well, you can only do that in close cooperation with the local and regional authorities. And you are representing the local and regional authorities. So I think this is why skills policy is so, uh, has so much to do with your own responsibility. By the way, in many countries, in many member states, local and regional authorities have Respons responsibilities at the level of education, but also skills, uh, skills institution. Now, um, that's why this year will be important, and we have to make uh, this year a great success. You know that uh, the President of the Commission presented a few days ago the Green Deal Industrial Plan. This is Europe's response among others, to the famous American plan, IRA, but it is also finally a continuation of what uh, the Commission has uh, proposed from the beginning of its mandate, the Green Deal. 
but uh, it is uh, focusing on uh, the development of Europe's industry. Because we all understand now that industry is at the heart of our economic, uh, of our economic strength. It's at the heart of our international and global competitiveness. And this, especially at a moment where globalization is changing, changing a lot, where we had, partly due to COVID, a lot of impacts on global supply chains, where industries, for instance, the automotive industry, the committee is very much uh, dealing with, uh, sometimes had to stop production because they did not have uh, the uh, components uh, to produce cars. So I think there is a, an awareness now that Europe has to give a new strong impetus to its industrial development. But this industrial development will be based on new technologies. It will be based on knowledge. It will be based on innovation. It will be based on automation. And all that means that we have to reskill millions, millions of people. We assume that about half of the uh, workforce in Europe has to be reskilled in the next uh, few years, which is an extremely vast uh, enterprise uh, we, have, uh, we have to engage in. And uh, I like very much that uh, what you have said in your resolution when we talk about uh, the complete shift in skill set and mindset. Skill set, obviously, we have to be aware that a lot of new skills have to be learned. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, the director of our uh, agency, uh, CEDIFOP, is here and we are working a lot on these skill sets. We're working a lot what kind of new skills are needed, what are the new jobs, and what skills are needed for these jobs. And on the other hand, it's a question of mindset. Because uh, we have to be aware that if we have to skill, upskill, reskill so many people, we have to convince them that this is an investment which is in their advantage, in their interest. When industries have to reskill part of their, their uh, uh, employees, they first have to convince them that this is a good thing for them. There is sometimes a lot of distrust when people hear that after years they have done a job they have to be reskilled. And I think this is also the uh, importance of this year of skill to tell every citizen that it is an investment in his or her future, in uh, the future of young people, especially those who are left behind. The needs, we have three million needs. We have discussed that during the uh, uh, discussion around the year, of, uh, the year of youth. So I think, uh, uh, in that perspective, we have to make uh, this year of skills a success. We have to invest a lot of money here, but this is not a cost. This is a real investment. And uh, again, uh, we have uh, had this interesting meeting on automotive. This is one sector, but it's not the only one. Uh, there are a lot of sectors which have to go through a tra complete transformation. I'm coming from a steel area. Uh, with my Luxembourgish colleague here, they know uh, how this steel area has been transformed. And the uh, steel industry is not an old industry. It's an industry which is now going into totally new technologies. Green steel, that's what we have to realize if we want to keep a steel industry in Europe. And I think for all kinds of reasons, not just employment, but also strategic reasons, we have to keep uh, this kind of industries in Europe. But this means also that a lot of people working in these industries have to be reskilled, have to learn uh, a lot of new technologies. And my last word is about digital. Well, we, there is a gap in Europe on digital. We have uh, still 40% uh, of people who have no or very low uh, digital skills. And this year should be really uh, the uh, create incentives for more and more people to get basic but also higher digital skills. We have to invent also the right ways to teach people, to reskill them. We will not send millions of people back to school. We have to find innovative ways how we can do that, how we can reskill, and also how to appreciate, finally, their level. That's one of the ideas is to really create 
a, 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 an objective measurement, how far uh, people have, uh, for instance, digital skills, which is uh, extremely important for all companies and especially SMEs. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Now I would like to give the floor to have an input from the Committee of the Region side, namely from our SADAC Commission. I would like to give the floor to the Chair of the SADAC Commission, uh, Mrs. Ristova. You have the floor for three minutes. Thank you very much, dear President, dear Commissioner, dear Chair of M Committee, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. After hearing such an inspiring messages, I will try to complete the vertical image of the skill landscape in Europe, of course, from the perspective of the local and regional. To begin, I would like to underline how important is the role of local and regional authorities in skill policies and to immediately inform you that the Committee of the Regions will contribute to the successful implementation of the European Year of Skills by ensuring that our objectives take into account a strong local and regional perspective. As the resolution that the Committee of the Regions adopted in December says, and it expresses the hope that the territorial dimension will be reflected. In my capacity as a chair of the committee of the SEDEC Commission, I can tell you that skills will represent a priority policy area for us in the coming years, not only this year. I also want to stress that we will engage to address the new challenges that have emerged after the many crises that we have been suffering and their consequences, like the COVID-19 pan uh, pandemic, the war in Ukraine, the energy crisis. We will also pay attention to the need to speed both the green and digital transition, as well the demographic changes and brain drain. Our focus will be on the reaffirming of the need of the investments in skills so that we have to unlock better opportunities for all and let me say especially for the young people i would like to underline that by putting people at the heart of lifelong learning policies further improvements can be achieved in the effective deployment of resources for the development of the education and training and in this regard validation procedures for skills which are acquired outside the formal education system are a vital part of a fundamental changes of the European model of vocational and training system. The local level is becoming increasingly important in implementing skill management and often has a more innovative approach, even though local innovative capacities frequently suffer from the institutional support because of the lack of financial and human resources and not because of the vision and genuine interest. Two important aspects would like to mention here. It is harnessing talent in European Union regions and the demographic change. The loss of young and educated workforce is a huge problem and challenge for communities across the European Union. And here I would like to mention something which we are realizing very strongly, that in the long term, any change or transition to a sustainable and competitive economic model, which is based on the knowledge economy, would seem very difficult to be achieved as a scenario if disparities between territories are widening. Therefore, the Committee of the Regions wants to see and the regional and local authorities as a strategic partners in the design, implementation and monitoring of the relevant strategies implementation because of the important role that we play. And for this reason, I would like to thank for the proposal to involve our committee in the work of the national coordinators. And just one more sentence, being in the Committee of the Regions as a member of the committee so close to our citizens, we can be very helpful in continuing the debates and also participating uh, in uh, the uh, situations you. where we can improve the involvement of uh, local and regional authorities in the better skill implementation. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> 
Mr. Dragos Pizlaru, welcome to the Committee of the Regions, and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. I will now give you the floor for around three minutes. <laughs> So you have privilege. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, uh, dear President, um, uh, dear Chair Kristova, um, honorable members of the Committee of Regions. I, I, will, I wouldn't like to repeat what uh, uh, the Commissioner has just mentioned. I just want to say that focusing this year on skills and on human capital uh, in the EU, it's not a choice. It's a must. The year 2023 represents for the European Parliament a momentum for rethinking the way we invest in skills, developing human capital and piloting new approaches that can correspond to our changing needs. And this is not just about what we can achieve this year, it's about paving the way for the future. It's an important legacy that we will be working together this year, on this year. You have heard clearly the link between skills and the new Green Deal industrial plan, our attempt to, to keep the competitiveness of the European Union. And, and this is very clear. Right now, the messages from the private sector are crystal clear. 40% of the SMEs are saying that they have problems in finding the right skills. And there is a big problem of skill mismatch and skill shortage. So there is a clear connection between what we are investing in human capital and what we can deliver in the economy. And for that, I would say very clear and loud that economic and social objectives can no longer be treated separately and operating in silos. This has been a model that showed its limits. That's why the discussion is not about the social or labor issues. It's, it's clearly about the economic future of the Union, about EU competitiveness. And again, it shouldn't be competitiveness versus fairness. And this is the second very important reason for the year of skills, that the skills, investing in skills, investing in human capital means basically investing in the social models. The best way to be sure that we have uh, fairness and equity um, and we have cohesion and convergence would be to have better paid jobs, quality jobs, adapted to the future of the labor market. And this is something that is very important. We are living right now a period with increasing cost of living where a lot of people are living in precarious conditions. And we need to respond. And this is one of the best possible responses, investing in people. Last but not least, localizing skills. I, I believe that the issue of competence is a very important issue when it comes to social or related competence. But right now, I really believe that it's time to pick the best possible place to do the job, to invest in properly and implement it. That's why I see that we need to enlarge the European Pact of Skills in order to reach more people at regional and local level. And the local and regional partnerships between the business sector, academic sector, local and regional authorities, civil society are essential. The Parliament has actually put that forward and pleaded for that, for the RRF approach, uh, Repower approach. That, what, that didn't go you know, as, as planned, basically, because we were always in an emergency thing. But right now, we need local pact for skills. We need developing local strategies for employment and, and supporting the development of one-stop shops and local hubs for skill development. So this can go without saying that the implementation of this year and of this agenda cannot be done without the local involvement. And this is a critical aspect that is part of the way in which we want to negotiate from the European Parliament the content of the year skills. We need city employment agencies. We need an involvement of the municipalities and cities in delivering this full package of quality social services that can allow skills. And by the way, the shortage that we have, and we are often looking outside the EU to get more people to work, but the, uh, we are, have a, a lot of people that are inactive in our societies. And that means that we need to activate them, and the best possible place to do that would be at local level. So this being said, uh, I'm really glad that I, I can pass this message from the European Parliament to you that we are looking for a fruitful partnership for the implementation of the Thank European EU skills. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Now I give the floor to our guests. Thank you so much for being here. Mr. Jurgen Siebel from SEDEFOP. You have the floor for three minutes. Yes, thank you, President. Uh, thank you, uh, all the other distinguished speakers and honorable members uh, of this committee. Um, uh, I would like to uh, resonate what, um, what Ms. Uh, Ristova said and also uh, Dragos Pislaru. Uh, it cannot be just for one year. Uh, and in fact, CDFOP, uh, for CDFOP, every year is a year of skills because we are the European Union Agency for Skills and for vocation education, training, qualifications, but we provide skills intelligence uh, that will help policymakers to take the right decisions at all levels, European, but down to lead, uh, regional and local as well. And I think that uh, it's a year, the year of skills should be a year to champion um, the people and their skills as uh, sort of the lever to make us uh, competitive as an, uh, as an economy, as was said before, but also for helping people in societies to prosper and grow. Uh, in their own right. And uh, ultimately, the green and digital transitions will be tr skills transformation journeys. That's what we clearly see. Euro uh, CDFOP's European Skills and Jobs Survey says, and uh, Commissioner Schmidt quoted this, that 52% of adult workforce in Europe needs some digital upskilling. And we're not talking coding or AI. We're talking basics. One in five European adults in the workforce need basic digital skilling navigating the internet and social media. Another 30 to, 30 30 to 40% need uh, training in uh, such basic things as uh, word processing and uh, dealing with spreadsheets. Um, so it is a, 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 an unprecedented skills a transformation that we are looking for and strategic foresight, which is one of the things that we provide in this field, uh, will help us see how things are trending and where we have to uh, address what kind of uh, skills gaps. And here, vocational education and training as maybe the fastest and most responsive uh, form of education to uh, skills gaps that are emerging. Um, uh, and because it's so close to the labor market and involves the social partners at all uh, times and is also broken down to regional levels, as was rightly said by by the chair of the SEDEC committee, um, is a key player in this uh, way to address those kinds of skills uh, shortages. However, I would like to make one point and resonate with what Dragos Pizlaru said. Um, uh, it's also about activation. Uh, and here, uh, we have to couple not only skills formation, but also with job design, because there's so much skills underutilization in the EU, it's hardly believable. Almost half of the workforce uh, do not feel challenged in their current uh, roles. So here is also a role maybe for the employers to uh, create jobs that are interesting and that are generating, um, uh, that are learning conducive and are allowing people to grow to their full potential. Uh, and with those remarks, I would like to close. We're excited uh, uh, to uh, be part of this journey of the European Year of Skills as the Agency for Skills in Europe. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now I will give the floor to our guest speaker, Novelia Kanterov, Director of the European Association of Regional local, and Local Authorities for Lifelong Learning. You have the floor for three minutes. Thank you. Dear distinguished speakers, dear audience, Mark Twain said, never let formal education get in the way of your learning. And that's the essence of uh, lifelong learning. As humans, we are predisposed to evolve, learn new skills, habits, competencies. And uh, it is, that is lifelong learning. It's about on-the-job training. It's about apprenticeship, vocational courses, upskilling and reskilling adult learning, it's important for an individual's employability, but also it has social inclusion, active citizenship, as well as greater sense of fulfillment and improved mental health. The European Association of Regional and Local Authorities for Lifelong Learning, or ERLAL, and its members recognize this and place the well-being and personal and professional development of citizens at the forefront in our post-COVID world. Under the presidency of the Basque Government Ministry of Education, and with EAL board members from the regions of Brittany, Tuscany, Catalonia, and Baden-Württemberg, EAL strive for supporting people to excel in a just and inclusive twin transition by prioritizing investment and regional policies for education and training. 
through our four working group and our recently launched Gender Equality Task Force, our members share challenges and good practices, acquire new knowledge and participate in joint projects uh, in topics such as vocational excellence, youth entrepreneurship, support to needs, and also smart specialization strategies, all funded at the Erasmus Plus and Interreg Europe. Our priorities for this year are mainly in our work plan for 2023, which is available on our website. Given the present context after the COVID pandemic and the uh, war in Ukraine, what can we do to level up our societies? Europe's regions need to set up a skills, governance processes and ecosystem that can quickly come up with appropriate solutions to the needs of our people and territories. At ARLAL, we believe that regions and local authorities have a privileged position to mobilize local stakeholders through skilled councils, committees or networks that can recognize, nurture and develop talent. ARLAL trusts the European Year of Skills will set up a milestone in the life of the association and we are grateful to embark on this journey. For the European Year to be a success and in line with the communication on harnessing talent in Europe's region, the regional and local level must be further stressed and the acquisition of skills should be understood in a lifelong learning context, which include, but is broader than only responding to labour market needs. We would like to suggest that the EU institution augment their efforts regarding communication strategies for the year in order to maximize impact. ERLAL is planning many initiatives to celebrate the Year of Skills, and we will share them with all of you. In June, we are organizing a regional summit for ERLAL political representative in Brussels, where we are planning to draw attention to the fundamental position that the regional authorities have in supporting uh, Europe's talent and in shaping our future. To finalize, I would like to remind everyone that on 11 of February, we are celebrating the United Nations International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Gender equality is essential to achieve full human potential and sustainable development. Let's make every day in the European Year of Skills an occasion to nurture, develop and celebrate talent. Thank you. Now it's time to give the floor to our members. We'll start by the political groups. It's, I will now give the floor to Mr. Emil Bock for four minutes. Dear Commissioners, meet dear colleagues. In the present changing world of work, having the right skills is essential for our success. Skills, as we know, are the natural bridge between education and employment. Skills are important for Europe and for every city and every region of the European Union. Having a skilled workforce is crucial for the economical development and competitiveness of our region. But let's face the reality in Europe. More and more people are losing their jobs either because of economic crisis or because of technological progress. But innovation, technology, green and digital transition also bring new jobs. We need major investments in skilling, reskilling and upskilling of the labor force in order to respond to the people's needs of jobs. In the end, the job is the best form of social protection. So very welcome to this initiative. The next point I want to emphasize is the major impact that EU cohesion policy can have on skills, especially through the European Social Fund and European Regional Development Fund. Skills and cohesion together. An example which Commissioner Schmidt already mentioned, and thank you for that. The EU has set a very ambitious objective to end the sales of passenger cars with an internal combustion engine by 2035, which would require major transformation of the automotive and supply industry regions. We must ensure that this transition will be just fair and successful by safeguarding the economic and social cohesion in every European region impacted by the transition, leaving, as we know, no region behind. The European Year of Skills 2023 is an important step in ensuring that every person has the opportunity to acquire the skills needed to succeed and that every person is better equipped to meet the challenges of the future in a changing world. The future belongs to those who invest in education, in their skills, and in the lifelong learning. The European Year of Skills 2023 is a great opportunity for us to encourage every citizen 
to take this step. The quality of life of every European citizen depends on our investment in education, skilling, upskilling, reskilling, and lifelong learning process. And this is probably the best investment for the democratic future of our Europe. Now it's time for action. We, as local and regional authorities, are ready to be involved in a very pragmatic year of skills for jobs and personal achievements of our citizens. Thank you. I would like to give the floor to our colleague, Carl Heinz Lamberts, for four minutes. Monsieur le Commissaire, Monsieur le Député européen, Mesdames, Messieurs, chers collègues, le groupe PSE se félicite vivement de la désignation de 2023 comme année européenne des compétences. Les changements à l'intérieur et entre les secteurs et les catégories professionnelles font apparaître d'importants défis en matière de perfectionnement des compétences et de reconversion. Cela doit se traduire par, un, par une action visant à garantir que les travailleurs acquièrent les compétences nécessaires pour traverser les transitions vertes et numériques en cours et qui se passent d'ailleurs de plus en plus rapidement. Si ceci, si ceci est plus facile pour les travailleurs hautement qualifiés et jeunes, il s'agit d'un vrai défi pour ceux peu qualifiés et âgés susceptibles de voir leur emploi disparaître. Les prévisions de compétences jouent un rôle crucial dans la facilitation et l'orientation des changements et des transitions, car elles fournissent un aperçu fondé sur des données probantes des tendances du marché de, du travail et d'une série d'autres évolutions sociétales et de leurs implications. Nous assistons à un vrai changement de paradigme. Les jeunes doivent être préparés à des métiers qui n'existent pas encore au moment où ils sont à l'école et l'apprentissage tout au long de la vie devient vraiment central. Nous sommes particulièrement reconnaissants au CDFOP pour son travail très conséquent dans ce domaine. Pour bien gérer les écosystèmes de compétences, il faut une coopération étroite de plusieurs acteurs, y inclut les autorités territoriales dans la conception et la mise en œuvre des politiques en matière de compétences. Toutefois, la notion même de compétences n'est pas définie de la même manière dans l'ensemble de l'Union, ce qui entrave la reconnaissance mutuelle et la portabilité des compétences. C'est pour ça que notre groupe réclame un cadre européen pour la reconnaissance et la validation de la formation, de l'expérience professionnelle et surtout de l'apprentissage non formel et informel. Nous soulignons la nécessité d'une garantie des compétences, donnant accès à une formation des employés de qualité et inclusive. Nous pensons également que les apprentissages et les stages de qualité pour les apprenants de tout âge devraient être disponibles mais aussi correctement rémunérés afin qu'ils ne deviennent pas une forme de main-d'œuvre bon marché. Nous sommes également fermement convaincus que les systèmes d'enseignement et de formation professionnelle devraient être suffisamment attrayants et bénéficier d'un meilleur statut afin de contribuer à réduire le décrochage scolaire et à améliorer l'employabilité des personnes. Cela nécessite des investissements publics durables pour garantir la formation des chômeurs et des personnes peu qualifiées afin qu'il acquiert de, des compétences de base certifiées, des aptitudes professionnelles et des compétences clés menant à des qualifications. Il est également urgent d'investir durablement dans les apprentissages de qualité, la participation des adultes à l'apprentissage tout au long de la vie et la formation des employés. Cela devrait être prioritaire dans le cadre du semestre européen et du plan de relance, en prévoyant un soutien accru au perfectionnement et à la reconversion par le biais des fonds structurels et d'investissements européens. Nous devons veiller à ce que les transitions écologiques et numériques soient justes et inclusives. Pour ce faire, nous devons donner aux gens les moyens de suivre le changement et d'acquérir les compétences résilientes. Les collectivités locales et régionales sont des acteurs clés en matière de sensibilisation efficace et de promotion de l'éducation et de la formation tout au long de la vie. Unissons donc nos efforts pour faire de l'année européenne 2023 un véritable succès. Thank you. Now the floor goes to colleague uh, Reisperman. You have the floor for three minutes. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman, and uh, welcome to our esteemed guests. Um, I think a lot of the of good things have already been said today uh, on behalf of the Renew Group. I will uh, continue in Dutch. <clears throat> uh, I think it's very important 
Oh, nou, sorry, ik kan continue in dat. Ik denk dat het erg belangrijk is om op twee dingen uh, te focussen die soms wat minder aandacht krijgen dan uh, gewenst zou kunnen zijn uh, in deze discussie. Uh, de ene is het belang van een integrale aanpak en de andere is het belang van het middelbaar beroepsonderwijs. Mensen met gewoon praktische vaardigheden. Uh, we hebben een, uh, een continent dat in transitie is. Uh, een energietransitie, uh, we hebben een energiecrisis zelfs. Uh, we moeten naar een duurzame economie. Uh, we krijgen steeds andere vaardigheden, digitale transitie. Ik denk dat er verschillende transities al genoemd zijn uh, vanochtend. Dat betekent dat er steeds andere vragen aan onze uh, werkkrachten worden gesteld. En, uh, ik zou u een voorbeeld willen geven van een, uh, hoe we dit in Nederland praktisch aanpakken van een dorpje Urk. Het dorpje van 20.000 inwoners, het lijkt niet zo groot, maar het is met 80% van de Nederlandse visserijindustrie een van de belangrijkste centra voor de visserij van het Noordzeegebied. De gemeente Urk verdient al eeuwen, letterlijk eeuwen, zijn brood door vis te vangen. Dat is een redelijk beperkte economische activiteit met een redelijk beperkte hoeveelheid vaardigheden die daarbij horen, hele praktische vaardigheden. Maar met stijgende energieprijzen, met de komst van windmolens op het, uh, de, in het Noordzeegebied, met de steeds teruglopende uh, de, de visstanden in het Noordzeegebied, worden er steeds andere eisen gesteld. En is het belangrijk dat de economie van Urk diversificeert. Om te zorgen dat we hier een economie houden die fit is voor de toekomst, is het belangrijk dat we investeren in de hele gemeenschap. Samen met het Rijk, samen met de gemeente, zijn we uh, bezig om een maritiem cluster op te richten en een haven nieuwe haven te maken. De, in deze haven wordt niet alleen vis aan land gebracht zoals nu het geval is, maar straks ook maintenance en overhaul van allerlei soorten van schepen gedaan. Samen met de universiteiten en hbo zijn we bezig met uh, werken aan een e duurzame energietransitie. Vanuit Urk zullen straks ook heel veel windmolens op de Noordzee geplaatst en onderhouden kunnen worden. Deze diversificatie van de economie is heel erg belangrijk, ook omdat de visserijsector zwaar getroffen is door brexit. En we zien op Urk dat het juist heel belangrijk is om te focussen op mensen met praktische vaardigheden. Mensen die gewoon met hun handen werken. De mensen waar, deze, waar dit continent op draait iedere dag weer. We hebben een integrale aanpak nodig op alle lagen van de overheid. Met ons totale bedrijfsleven. Om te zorgen dat de mensen de juiste vaardigheden krijgen aangeboden. En dat er ook de juiste werkgelegenheid voor ze is. Om te zorgen dat we in dit continent sterk, krachtig en sociaal blijven. Dank u wel. Thank you. Colleague Karaksoni, you have the floor for two and a half minutes. Tisztelt biztos úr, az európai gazdaság motorját a készségek hajtják. A munkavállaló készségeinek napra készen tartása pedig alapvető fontosságú a dinamikusan változó munkaerőpiacon. Mivel a zöld és a digitális átállás alapjaiban alakítják át a munkaerőpiaci ökoszisztémát, olyan hosszú távú politikát kell folytatnunk, amely lehetővé teszi regionális gazdaságaink virágzását. Magyarország kormánya hamar felismerte a digitális szektorban jelentkező munkaerőhiányt, és eltökélt szándéka volt, hogy a versenyképességfejlesztés és a gazdaság digitalizációja révén több munkahelyet teremtsen, mint ahány munkahely a digitalizáció miatt megszűnik. Ezzel összhangban Magyarország digitális oktatási stratégiájának célja, hogy az oktatási rendszer felkészítse a diákokat a digitális munkaerőpiacra, még a digitális munkaerőprogram a digitális ipar területén tapasztalható jelentős munkaerőhiányt kívánja mérsékelni a munkavállalók digitális felkészültségének javításával. Az átképzés és továbbképzés egyszerre két problémát is megoldhat. A munkanélküliségre és a munkaerőhiányra egyaránt választ jelenthet, amely hosszú távon elengedhetetlen minden jól működő gazdaság számára. Az egész életen át tartó tanulás, mint eszme, tehát egyre inkább felértékelődik. A munkanélküliségre hatással van tovább a jellemzően vidéki területeket érintő agyelszívás problémája, mely során az érintett régióknak meg kell küzdeniük a jól képzett emberek elvándorlása által okozott társadalmi, gazdasági hatásokkal. Fontosnak tartom kihangsúlyozni témában az európai területi társulások, az egtc szerepét is, Az én régión Pest vármegye önkormányzata igen aktív a szlovák-magyar határmenti együttműködésekben. A Restart nevű akciótervben, melyet a 2019-ben Pest megye és a szlovákiai Nyitra kerületi önkormányzat által alapított Pontibus EGTC koordinál, 
Több települési és civil, önkormányzat és civil szervezet vesz részt. Az akcióterv célja, hogy az alsó ipoly völgyre jellemző, elsősorban a periférikus helyzetből adódó gazdasági társadalmi lemaradás csökkenjen, munkaerőpiac élénküljön, miközben reflektáljon az előregedő népesség jelentette kihívásokra. Például a képzés kompetenciafejlesztés nagy kihívást jelent, például olyan területeken is, mint az aktív időskor, szociális ellátás és házi gondozás. Célunk, hogy integrált, egymáshoz komplementer módon illeszkedő szolgáltatásokat hozzunk létre. Úgy, hogy a munkavállalók mindkét oldaláról érkeznek a határnak. Thank you. Member Kirin McCarthy, the floor is yours for two minutes. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mr. President. Uh, dear Commissioner, um, can I just say thanks very much for once again being at the forefront of a fantastic um, concept like the European Year of Skills. Um, for, for me, uh, yes, it's important, uh, and on behalf of the European Alliance Group, it's important that yeah, jobs and human capital have a focus. Um, but I'd like to kind of maybe pull the narrative back to um, what Ms. Cantero was saying on the importance of lifelong learning. Um, I am very, very lucky that in my own city of Cork in the south of Ireland, uh, we have had for the last over 12 years uh, organise an annual lifelong learning festival with over 100 events. Um, and the, the motto is investigate, participate and celebrate. Um, that it's not, not only... Yes, we are building an economy, but we also need to build a society. I think it's an ideal year to put a focus on society building and society, building society capacity as well. Um, in my city, out of the Lifelong Learning Festival, we've also created learning neighbourhoods. Um, so we've brought together an ecosystem of, of people with different interests. Uh, and I've seen firsthand in my own community um, the building of community capacity, the building of a sense of place, place-making, uh, inclusiveness, sense of empowerment, um, and, I, and I think the smallest idea on learning um, can actually have a huge ripple effect on someone's life, uh, on a citizen, uh, on someone maybe who hasn't changed anything in their life for a while. Um, and I think one of the, the key words that have, has been coming out this morning a lot is that uh, the world is changing. Um, but I think to change as well, you need to learn. We all need to learn new skill sets um, throughout life. Um, and one of the elements that came out of the European pillar of social rights in the last few years is that um, access to lifelong learning as a right. Um, there was an ambitious target set of 60% um, of adults uh, should be participating in learning every year by 2030. I think my question to you, Commissioner, and the Honourable uh, Member of the European Parliament is that, how do we actually get to that, um, that 60%? Um, also, the lifelong learning was a, a key point in the Conference on the Future of Europe. I, I, I sat um, as a member of the Culture, Education, Sports and Youth uh, a panel, you. and there was massive discussions on lifelong learning. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> member Tine Radindia, you have the floor for two minutes. Predsedujoči, hvala za besedo. Spoštovani gosti, članice in člani, vesel sem, da lahko predstavim stališče zelenih. Pozdravljamo Evropsko leto spretnosti kot leto izjemne spodbude za politike in naložbe na področju znan in spretnosti ki bi omogočili in upolnomočili zeleni prehod in digitalizacijo. Predlagamo, da se vključi mlade in mladinske organizacije v planiranje, izvajanje in evaluacijo Evropskega leta spretnosti kot dediščino in nadaljevanje Evropskega leta mladih in v spretem konceptu in duhu youth mainstreaminga. To naj bo most med dvema evropskima letoma in s tem ujačanje obeh. Področje, na katerem ga želimo še posebej opozoriti, je vloga mest in regij pri prepoznavanju neformalne in informalne izobrazbe in veščin, ki jih mladi predobivajo v nevladnih organizacijah. Tukaj mesta in regije potrebujejo vso podporo in je zmenjavo dobrih praks, ki v Evropi že ustajo. Zato pričakujemo, da bo leto prineslo tudi primerne ukrepe za večjo prepoznavnost in priznanje za neformalno izobrazbo in informalno učenje. Zato, da zagotovimo, da so kompetence predobljene na ta način, prepoznane v bostopu ali ponovnem bostopu v izobrazbo ali delo. In ne nazadnje. Sprednosti in veščine za zeleni prehod so izjemno pomembne. Podnebne spremembe že spreminjajo trg dela in milijoni v Evropi se bomo morali pregoditi na še nikoli videne sprememb. Investicije v veščine in sprednosti za zeleni prehod lahko bistveno pomagajo ekonomiji, podjetjem, občinam, državljankam in državljanom, da skupaj ustvarjamo boljši in bolj trajnostni svet. Thank you. Member Schmidt, Thomas Schmidt, you have the floor for one minute. 
Ja, vielen Dank, lieber Herr Prof. Kommissar Schmidt, meine sehr verehrten Damen und Herren. Wir stehen vor einem großen Wandel in vielerlei Hinsicht. Ein großer Wandel findet auch in der Automobilindustrie statt. Und als augenblicklicher Chairman der Automotive Regional Alliance bin ich Ihnen dankbar, lieber Kommissar Schmidt, dass Sie uns bei dieser Initiative so unterstützen. Denn es geht am Ende nicht allein um das Bauen von Autos, sondern es geht um Beschäftigung, es geht um Wohlstandssicherung in unseren Regionen. Deshalb brauchen wir ein Betrachten bei der Strategieentwicklung der gesamten Kette, von der Forschung über die Zulieferer, die den Wandel in den großen Automobilunternehmen bis hin zum Service, der auch oftmals vergessen wird. Und diese Strategien dürfen nicht einengen, die müssen befördern, die müssen Lust machen auf diesen Wandel und die müssen Chancen für die Regionen Europas eröffnen. Vielen Dank nochmal für die große Unterstützung, lieber Kommissar Schmidt. Thank you. Member Gamalio Ayer, you have the floor for one minute. Muchas gracias, Presidente, Comisario. Para las regiones con problemas demográficos, como es el caso de la que yo represento, Galicia en España, también es muy importante la agenda europea de las capacidades. Nosotros estamos promoviendo una serie de medidas para favorecer el retorno de emigrantes, la captación de talento y para mejorar la cualificación de la mano de obra. Y lo hacemos a través de una agenda gallega de capacidades para el empleo, una agenda regional de capacidades para el empleo que pretende aunar esfuerzos públicos y privados para ofrecer a los ciudadanos más y mejores oportunidades de aprendizaje que respondan a las necesidades cambiantes del mercado laboral. Esta agenda la estructuramos en tres medidas y cuenta con el apoyo del Mecanismo Europeo de Recuperación y de Resiliencia y del Fondo Social Europeo Plus, un pacto por las capacidades a través del cual empresas y clusters y un campus de formación por el empleo, la digitalización del servicio de empleo en Galicia y la plataforma para la valorización del talento para capacitar a lo largo de toda la vida y capacitación a demanda. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Member Ufu Kaya, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, many colleagues mentioned that we are facing big changes such as the green and digital transition and I welcome the year of the skills. My colleague mentioned that it's a good transition from the year of the youth as well, and I understand that we focus on civic participation and on the labor market, but we shouldn't forget education. Most European programs focus on universities, and I think we should throw down the hierarchy in, in education that universities are always better. Our youngsters who go to vocational education should be proud because they are making Europe. We need them to keep the green economy of tomorrow going. So I hope in the upcoming year we can focus on vocational education and put it in a higher level. In Europe, you can have the best skilled, smart hands that the world can provide. Thank you. Thank you. Member Dietmar Brox, you have the floor for one minute. Andros Karajanis, you have the floor for one minute. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ κύριε Πρόεδρε, κύριε Επίτροπε. Αρκετοί είναι οι άνθρωποι που σπουδάζουν στη χώρα του ή στο εξωτερικό για να έχουν καλύτερε ευκαιρίε εργοδότηση, αλλά και για να συμβάλλουν στην ενίσχυση του εξειδικευμένου εργατικού προσωπικού. Δυστυχώ, οι μισθολογικέ ανισότητε, ιδιαίτερα στου νέου ανθρώπου, αλλά και μεταξύ ανδρών και γυναικών, είναι μεγάλε. Κάτι που απογοητεύει του νέου ανθρώπου, οι οποίοι. Αναγκάζονται να εργάζονται με χαμηλού μισθού μεταξύ 500 και 800 ευρώ το μήνα και πολλέ φορέ χωρί δικαιώματα κοινωνική ασφάλιση και άλλα επιδόματα. Μεγάλη απογοήτευση αποτελεί επίση η εκμετάλλευση των νέων από του εργοδότε του, αφού ο μισθό του δεν ανταποκρίνεται στα προσόντα του και το χειρότερο δεν του εργοδοτούν για τούτου θεωρούν υπερπροσοντούχου οι οποίοι θα απαιτήσουν ψηλότερε απολαβέ. Αυτέ οι εργασιακέ αδικίε θα πρέπει να αρθούν γιατί οι νέοι άνθρωποι, αν δεν αποκατασταθούν οικονομικά, δεν πρόκειται να αποφασίσουν να δημιουργήσουν οικογένεια, κάτι που δημιουργεί περαιτέρω κοινωνικά προβλήματα. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Grazie, Presidente. Con la nuova agenda delle competenze, l'Unione Europea si è impegnata a conseguire entro il 2030 obiettivi prioritari in materia di occupazione, competenze e riduzione della povertà. La mia regione, la Lombardia, è stata tra le prime regioni europee ad aver 
costituito un partenariato regionale nell'ambito del patto per le competenze a livello europeo. Questa iniziativa rappresenta un importante traguardo nel processo volto a rafforzare la competitività del sistema produttivo lombardo. La principale sfida che la Regione Lombardia affronta è quella di orientare le politiche industriali e di sviluppo economico. Quindi si propone di focalizzare l'attività dell'anno europeo su questi temi. Iniziative ed eventi e progetti da promuovere non solo a livello europeo e nazionale, ma anche in linea con il principio di sussidiarietà. Garantire un accordo regionale tra i coordinatori nazionali e regionali nella pianificazione delle iniziative dell'anno europeo. Favorire il rafforzamento delle dimensioni regionali nei 14 patti europei delle competenze esistenti. Thank you. Lancia... Thank you. Member Isold Rice, you have the floor for one minute. Ja, einen schönen guten Morgen, Herr Präsident, Herr Kommissar Schmidt. Die wesentliche Vorteil, wie Deutschland zum Beispiel die berufliche Bildung organisiert, ist die einzigartige Verknüpfung von theoretischen Kenntnissen und praktischer Ausbildung. Durch diese Flexibilität kann Mann, aber auch Frau sich auf neue Trends wie die Digitalisierung und die Transformation gut einstellen, normalerweise. Aber das gelingt natürlich nur, wenn die Ausbildungsinhalte auf der Höhe der Zeit sind. Und da, das ist leider bedauerlicherweise in Deutschland auch nicht überall geschehen, die benäuenden Berufsfelder sind in den Berufsschulen oftmals noch gar nicht angekommen. Die Ausbildungsinhalte entsprechen bedauerlicherweise nicht immer den aktuellen Anforderungen. Und deshalb ist das Jahr der Kompetenzen auch ein Weckruf, und gut, weil wir ohne aus gut ausgebildete Fachkräfte die neuen Herausforderungen erfolgreich nicht managen können. Und mir ist ganz besonders wichtig, dass den Menschen nämlich ein selbstbestimmtes Leben ermöglicht wird Thank dadurch. You. Und Herr Pislaro hat das so schön genannt, in Thank Menschen you. investieren, das sollte unter, unser Kompass sein. Thank you. Member Markus uh, Wollner, you have the floor for one minute. Herr Präsident, geschätzte Kolleginnen und Kollegen, ich möchte ausdrücklich einen Dank anbringen an unsere Vorredner und an die Gäste am Podium, dass dieses Jahr der Kompetenzen so intensiv betont wird. Ich komme aus einer Region im Westen Österreichs, rund um den Bodensee herum, wo die Frage der Wettbewerbsfähigkeit das alles Entscheidende sein wird. Wir sind bei einer Jugendarbeitslosigkeit unter 4 Prozent angekommen. Das heißt, wir haben de facto Vollbeschäftigung in unserer Region und einen großen Mangel an Fachkräften. Ich möchte daher besonders unterstützen, dass diese Frage von Kompetenzentwicklung, von Skills so in den Mittelpunkt gestellt wird, weil es schlichtweg um die Wettbewerbskraft der Regionen geht, in Europa insgesamt, aber auch der Blick auf Gesamteuropa wird zeigen, wenn wir bei der künstlichen Intelligenz uns nach wie vor abhängen lassen von Amerikanern und Asiaten, dann werden wir unsere Kraft im Wettbewerb verlieren, ebenso in anderen Bereichen von digitalen Kompetenzen. Es geht mir ein bisschen ähnlich wie die deutschen Vorredner. In Österreich gibt es ein äh, exzellentes Modell einer dualen Berufsausbildung. Wir kombinieren Theorie mit Praxis äh, sehr gut. Und äh, ich würde meinen, dass man in diese Richtung vor allem bei den Jugend, und ich bin dankbar, dass Thank das you. so konkret angesprochen wurde, noch mehr Thank ein you. Engagement entwickelt. Dankeschön. Member Florian Schütz, you have the floor for one minute. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, sehr geehrter Herr Kommissar, Kompetenz im umfassenden Sinn bedeutet einerseits Kenntnisse und Fertigkeiten, die Digitalisierung ist angesprochen worden, aber auch Allgemeinbildung und Orientierungswissen. Kompetenz dient der Sicherung der Freiheit, nicht nur der Verwertungslogik. Bildung und Kompetenz ist ein Menschenrecht. Man darf das nicht nur aus der Wirtschaft heraus, sondern man muss das aus den Menschen sehen. Dadurch entsteht auch eine starke Säule zur Verbindung äh, zur Säule sozialer Rechte. Bildung vor Ort ist entscheidend. Es geht um regionale Angebote, überall in den Bereichen der Europäischen Union, für alle Menschen, unabhängig der sozialen Situation, des Geschlechts, besonders bei Mädchen und jungen Frauen, muss man da einen Schwerpunkt legen, des Alters und der Beeinträchtigung. Entscheidend ist, wir dürfen niemanden zurücklassen. Das gilt auch für die Anerkennungen. Wichtig ist nicht, wo sie erworben sind, wie sie erworben sind und wann sie erworben sind, sondern dass sie anerkannt werden. Kompetenz im umfassenden Sinn ist ein Schlüssel zur Freiheit und Gerechtigkeit. Sie ist der Schlüssel zum Erfolg der Europäischen Union. Dankeschön. Thank you. Marco Veslikas, your floor is yours for one minute. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll speak on Croatian. Investicija u ljude je uvijek najbolja investicija, zato pozdravljam odluku Europske komisije i drago mi je zapravo da kao odbor regija možemo i podržati ovu inicijativu za Europsku godinu vještina koja 
ovaj kompleksan problem sa kojim se danas suočava cijela Europska unija nastoji dati svoj doprinos. S jedne strane imamo neka zanimanja koja zbog automatizacije proizvodnih procesa postoje višok, dok se pojavljuju neka nova koja zahtijevaju visoko obrazovane radnike. Imamo i veliki problem nedostatka radne snage u brojnim djelatnostima bez kojih je danas nemoguće uopće zamisliti modern način života, od zdravstva, turizma, graditeljstva, poljoprivrede i mnogih drugih koji su čak više izraženi u novim članicama Europske unije u kojoj spada i Hrvatska zbog migracija koje imamo prema zapadu. Kao gradonačelnik grada Pregrade, grada u industrijskoj razvijenoj Krapinsko-Zagorskoj županiji, grada koja ima jednu od najvećih udjela radnoaktivne snage u ukupnom stanovništvu u cijeloj Republikoj Hrvatskoj i gospodarstva koji se ubrzano razvija, u svakodnoj komunikaciji sa poslovnim sektorom slušam komentar nedostaje nam radne snage i odgovornost je da kroz institucije pratimo potrebe gospodarstva. Thank you. Commissioner Schmidt, I know you have to leave. Give you the floor for final remarks. Three minutes. Thank you very much. Very briefly. First, um, I would uh, really uh, thank you for the debate and re your remarks. On the Pact of Skills, I would very strongly invite regions to join. There are already G regions part of the Pact of Skills. I think this is a place where a lot of uh, good initiatives can be developed. Second, 60% of uh, long life learning uh, as an average for Europe, each member state has committed to increase the participation of workers in lifelong learning. This can be done uh, by better organization of lifelong learning, by financial support, including European uh, funds. Third, vocational training. I think this is absolutely important. Uh, I fully agree we have to support vocational training. We have a European Alliance for Apprenticeships, and this really has to show that vocational training is the form of the future. This is the form which uh, allows people to uh, transit from education uh, to uh, jobs, but also it is the right way how to reskill and upskill people during their uh, professional life. And finally, I want to attract your attention to uh, uh, a communication the Commission has adopted recently, which is called Harnessing Talent in Europe's Regions. And this is important because we see that in many regions we have demographic decline, we have a decline in the workforce. And I think this is a big issue for economic, social, territorial cohesion. And the idea is precisely to put forward a new talent booster mechanism, a mechanism that will support EU regions facing a talent development trap to train, retrain and attract people because their future finally depends on skilled people who remain in the regions and also on their capacity to attract people to further develop and sometimes also uh, transform the economy in these regions. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming. I will now give the floor to uh, Jurgen Siebel for a reaction. Uh, two minutes. Yes, thank you. Uh, and uh, I, uh, the, I would like to respond to many of your uh, statements. Uh, very good uh, thoughts in there. In particular, of course, uh, it uh, is like music to my ears that so many speakers, and then including the Commissioner in the end, said that VET, vocation education training, is the form of the future, that it is at least at equal footing with higher education and equally important. I think that is something we can preach and preach and preach because repetition, as you know, is the mother of belief. Um, uh, I would like to make one remark uh, to a specific uh, comment that came from the Greens, from Mr. Uh, Radinja. I, I liked uh, this uh, linking to the young, and I would like to make one more aspect of uh, vocation, education and training, especially its work-based variations, uh, a key issue here for the greening success uh, of our economies and societies, because the young people all belong to this generation Greta, right? And they have the mindsets. They are thinking in green ways. And there's no better way for companies, and hence for economies and societies, than integrating these young people early on, for instance, in apprenticeships, where they can be change agents within the organizations where they live and where they strive uh, and uh, 
acquire their first steps in a career. So I think that is an important lever uh, that should not be underestimated. Then there were remarks uh, from several speakers on the importance of uh, recognition, validation, and in particular also of non-formal and informal forms of education. That is also at the heart of what CEDEFOP is doing. We're engaged in even global networks working on these kinds of uh, activities to facilitate uh, one of the most important aspects that is a skills-driven uh, migration a policy, which now also the European Year of Skills um, uh, calls for. So we have to become better in these uh, forms of, uh, of validation. Uh, and uh, uh, with that, I think uh, I can close. Again, thank you very much for uh, having us or having me with you uh, for today. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jürgen, for being here. Now I give the floor for conclusion for final remarks to Noelia Cantero for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I would like to thank all the comments that have been mentioned because I think you have uh, given us a wide um, example of all the innovative practices that are happening at regional and local level. And I think we should praise uh, all of them, like the uh, Lifelong Learning Festival in Cork or the Skills uh, uh, Strategy in Galicia and many, many, many others. So thank you very much. I can see the work of our association reflected somehow in all of your voices. And um, I would like just to reivindicate a bit that uh, what we are doing today, what we are talking about today, we need to, to do it from a humanistic approach. It's about uh, every single individual in Europe, it's about every single learner. We have been uh, heard from commissioners that there are three million needs in Europe. This is really huge, it's, a, it's an in incredible loss of, of talent and we need to move. We have also heard that there are many adults that, who don't have the basic uh, skills. And uh, last night, for example, in the Belgian news, I heard about dropping out of our young people from vocational uh, courses. So we really need to mobilize uh, ourselves and, and tackle those uh, issues. Uh, we know that the regions have uh, the responsibility to accompany citizens in this process. And we know as well that some of our regional authorities are already in our administration quite a stretch. So I would recommend you to, to not only invest in the people, but also invest in yourself in reinforcing your team and in reinforcing your efforts. And one way also of doing it would be to work uh, in uh, European networks, to, go, to work through association, and as uh, Commissioner was saying, to join the Pact for Skills. We are also a member of the Pact for Skills, and we are also a member of the European Alliance for Apprenticeship, which has been uh, great uh, experiences and forum for us to, to exchange of our challenges. So thank you very much for all your comments, and I hope that we can continue this uh, dial dialogue uh, during the year and even during many, many, many years to come. Thank you. Thank you so much. This concludes our point. I would like to thank our guest speakers.